Hi everyone, it's Liz here from Castle Handmade. Today I'm going to show you how to make these rustic wrist warmers. They're made using a chunky yarn. I've decided to use Morrison Sons Estate 14 ply. You'll need 250 gram balls. You will need a 7mm hook, a pair of scissors, and a darning needle with a large eye. Now these wrist warmers are a really simple construction, so very easy for beginners. Uh, it also shows you a great technique for creating this faux knit look uh, with a crochet hook. So um, the way that they're constructed is that uh, they worked in rows forwards and then you flip it over and you work back that way. Um, you then keep creating all these rows until you have a rectangle. And once you have the right size, you then join the starting row to the final row and you leave a little um, opening for your thumb. To create this faux knit look, we'll be using half trebles in UK terms or half doubles in US terms. And we'll be working in the third loop of this stitch. That's what creates that faux knit look. To begin, you need to make a slip knot and place it on your hook. We're then going to make a chain of 25. Once you have made the 25 stitches, we're then going to start making the half treble, that's in UK terms, or half double in US terms. We'll start by placing the first half treble into the second chain from the hook. Here we have the first chain, here we have the second chain. So to make a half treble, we yarn over, put our hook into that chain stitch, yarn over, bring it through the chain, come up, you have three on your hook, you yarn over again and pull through all three loops. So I'll show you that one again. This time we're working the stitch into the following chain, yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over and come back through. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three. You're going to go ahead and do that into each chain along that starting row. When you have finished working a half treble stitch into each chain, you will have 24 half trebles in your first row. You then need to chain one and turn your work over. For row two and every row um, here on, we'll be working our half treble stitches into the third loop of the stitch. When you take a look at the top of this stitch, you will see the two loops. Now they are the regular loops that are on top of all stitches. I'll pop my hook, the needle under there just to show you those two loops. We won't be working into those. Instead, we'll be working into the third loop, which is this one on the front here. this loop here. Because we've turned our work over, you'll find that that loop is sitting forward and it will be facing you when you flip it over. I'm going to show you how to make the stitch now. So we're making a half treble, but we're going in and under that third loop. 
coming through, yarn over, pull through all three. So I'll show you that again. This time we're going into the next third loop stitch. So we're going to work into every stitch along just by going under that third loop. When you reach the end of this row, you will still have the same number of stitches. So you'll have 24 stitches. When you finish row two, you'll have 24 half treble stitches. Now I'm gonna turn it over and show you that faux knit look that's appearing because we are working into that third loop of the half treble stitch. Now for rows three through to row 15, we're going to be doing the exact same thing that we did for row two. So we'll be making one chain stitch to begin then working a half treble into the third loop of every stitch along. So continue to do this until you have 15 rows. When you finish the, the 15 rows, you'll have a rectangle like this. What you then need to do is cut a long tail because we're going to be using that tail for the sewing together. You can then fasten off. So take the tail through the loop that was on your hook and pull it tight. Then what you need to do is fold the first row. This was our starting chain row. You're going to fold it up to where the row is that we just finished. You need to thread the tail through your darning needle. I'm just going to turn it around this way so you can see. Now I'm just going to sew these two rows together using whip stitch and I'm going to leave a three centimeter gap here for the thumb hole. I'll show you how I do a whip stitch to connect. So to join them to the two rows together, all you need to do is match up the coordinating stitches. So the first stitch on this side will connect to the first stitch on that side. And all we do is go under that stitch, under that stitch, and pull through. And again, I'm going under that next stitch, under that next one, and through. Now this will be the inside of the uh, wrist warmer, so you won't see the stitching at all. Oops, there you go. So all the way along, remembering to leave a little gap for the thumb hole. And then fastening off at the end. Just finished. Uh, stitching it together. I've woven in the ends and I've flipped it the right way out and you can either choose to leave the wrist warmer as it is just like this or you can add a double crochet in UK terms to the edging of it. So if you have a look here I've just done a double crochet stitch all along the edge of the top and the bottom. So you can do it like that or you can just leave it uh, like this because it still has a neat enough edging um, but I'll show you how to connect it here if you decide to um, add the edging. All you need to do is make a slip knot on your hook. You then join the yarn to the edge making a slip stitch 
just like that chain one and then going along the edge just evenly choose your spots and you can place a double crochet stitch all along the edge it just gives it a bit of a neater finish but like I said um, it's not necessary so it's totally up to you if you decide to do that and just keep going all the way around finishing off here and again around the bottom so there you have a finished rustic wrist warmer you just need to go ahead and make a second one and you'll have a lovely pair of warm wrist warmers to wear now i'll leave all the links below to the materials that we use to make this as well as um, a link to the written pattern if you prefer to use that instead of uh, the video tutorial so thanks again for watching bye bye